times. Ah! What is up, everybody? Arrow Li coming at you. We got the second video on the YouTube going live right now. We're starting from the complete bottom, but I know, guys, in a year, we're going to be big time. We're going to be absolute, absolute big time. I have a lot of good content ahead of on this channel, guys, I want you to keep a lookout and hit that subscribe button because we are going to have a lot of 1v1 dual breakdowns, a lot of 1v2, 1v3 clips and breakdowns, some war action PvP breakdowns. We have I have so many cool ideas that I want to get in videos to help you guys out in these situations. And just to clarify, guys, this is a PvP-focused, bow-only, single-target damage build, right? My goal with this build is to be agile to be maneuverable and to take people out as quickly as, as I can with my bow damage abilities, right? What do I mean by the bow damage only? So getting into this build, guys, I am heavy, heavy, heavy assessed, obsessed with bow and arrows in every single game I play, right? You catch me on Warzone, I'm running the crossbow. You catch me in Modern Warfare, I'm running the crossbow. You catch me in Apex, I'm using the I'm using the compound bow, the bow check, right? I love this. I love the bow and I've been loving New Warts since it came out. So of course we did a bow only focus guide. What I mean by this is we are doing all of our damage with the bow. As you can see, these are my three abilities I like to use for the bow. We are using the rapier purely for the additional movement. We're not using it for damage. If melee get in close to us, we have a beautiful counter ability for a stun. We have a dash back and we have a fletch. On top of this, we are running the light gear for that extra movement. We have stacking movement buffs from the bow passives. Look at how fast we are, guys. We are flying. It is very hard for people to stay near us, whether they're melee or ranged. We are very, very, very evasive, as you can see. So let's get into our bow build. I don't want this video to take up too much of your guys' time. I see a lot of very, very lengthy bow PvP videos on YouTube. That's not going to be us. You guys can all read. I'm not going to run through each and every ability I'm going to hit a couple of key points that I noticed and that I found out working with a friend of mine, Raw Life, who's also a very good bow PvP player on my server. We kind of theorycraft a lot, a lot of testing. We figured out a lot of cool things. So this is what I'm running. Copy and paste this. I promise you. Single target. 1v1s, 1v2s, 1v3s. This is a cookie cutter build for every single situation. I'm not a guy who likes to respect before every duel. I think that's silly. You want something that works in every situation? This is it. Hands down, guys, I'm telling you, I have so many hours in PvP on this game. So many, so many, so many non-stop duels, outpost rush, wars, world PvP, 1v2s, 1v3s. We have so many clips and content on our Instagram and on our TikTok and on our Twitch. I'll link it all in the description below. If you guys aren't following, please go ahead and hit that with a follow. Look through the clips and highlights so you guys can see what I'm talking about. We have a lot more videos planned for this YouTube, guys. I want to do some 1v1 breakdowns, some stuff like that, but I wanted to first go over our actual build before we get into those videos so that way people can see what we're running if they want to run it. So like I said, some really good things in this build. Deal 20% more damage after dodging. Incredible. Nothing would be said on that. After you dodge, you gain 10% more haste. Thanks to the dodge roll and your weapon swapping mechanics, you can basically keep a 10% haste up in every single fight. You're cooking. My guy is fast, yo. He is Speedy Gonzalez out here. Speed, speed, speed. That's what this build is all about, right? Putting distance, dodging, dodging those ranged attackers' abilities, or dodging or, or putting distance on melee and clapping them down with the bow abilities. Because the bow hits so hard, guys, if you hit your shots. It is an incredible weapon in this game. I love it. Uh, we're running poison shot, obviously, with the 1.0.5 patch update. Poison shot got kind of buffed. They reduced the cooldown. 26 second cooldown with all the perks I'm running. And it also does, it's also based off weapon damage now. So it's hitting a little bit harder. On top of that, you get the 10% more damage to foe suffering from a debuff. Clean. Nothing to say there, right? You just, you start a fight with poison shot and you're doing 10% more damage the whole fight. Incredible. Until poison shot runs out, obviously. Running this side, a lot of people don't like rapid shot. I don't know why. If you're playing the bow in PvP, rapid shot is a must. It is an absolute must, guys. I get all my damage, all my bursts from this ability that's on a 12 second cooldown for me. It's insane. This ability is insane. Now, it is a high skill cap, right? You want to make sure you're using it at the right time. If you're fighting ranged players, I like to wait until I see their stamina bar is drained so I know they cannot be dodge rolling these abilities. And then I put three shots into them and they're gone. This will chunk players down if you hit all three shots. If you go with your shooting, practice, 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 and make sure you use this ability, guys. It is so good. The third hit staggers. The third hit does additional damage. This is an incredible ability. Please use it smart though, right? You don't want to use it when a melee is sitting on you point blank because you're going to be stationary for three seconds. You can take a lot of damage. Your whole your whole goal with this build that I'm running is to not take damage and to put out damage. Rapid fire is a must. You have so without this ability, I feel like I don't do enough burst damage to take someone out quickly. I'm just auto shotting and penetrating shotting. Rapid shot, rapid shot, rapid shot. Please use it, guys. It's insane. Practice with it. Obviously, penetrating shot is an incredible incident ability. It goes through targets, does a ton of damage. 
One special note I want to hit on penetrating shot. If you guys did not know this, aim true. Heavy attacks fly faster and deal 30% more damage as well as opening strike. Heavy attacks deal 20% increased damage to foes. These work with penetrating shot. Penetrating shot is considered a heavy attack. I did not know that until recently. I wanted to make sure I get that information out for you guys. So make sure you're running those two abilities with penetrating shot. Enough with the bow abilities. Let's get into the rapier abilities. Like I said, guys, the rapier abilities is full right side. All movement. We don't really care about the damage on this build. If you guys want to do damage on this build, maybe play with the abilities a little bit more. This is what I like to run with the light gear, with the bow. I'm purely using the rapier for movement. I never swing it. I never, never, never swing it, man. I'm using it for movement. One cool thing I will show you with the rapier. This is the only time I do damage. The bottom ability of Fletch is press a light attack at any time during Fletch and it'll stop him from a static. This is pretty cool. When I'm fighting range players, I like to use this. It's a quick little 800, 1,000 damage. Basically, you fletch, you light attack when you get on top of them, and that little, that little stab he does does around a shit ton of damage. It's 800 to 1,000 typically, depending on like if they're medium geared most of the time. It's a free hit essentially, right? And you're moving around pretty good using that. I never don't, I don't normally use this against melee because I, I, I never want to be close to melee. I never want to dive into melee. But in a range versus range fight, I like it. It feels like I'm... I'm, dot, I'm running my way through them. I'm hitting them on the way through. I'm running out behind them. It's just it's just more ducking, bobbing, and weaving out here, guys. It's incredible. But for melee, I typically just use it to right put more distance between me and the melee. Sometimes I'll dash through them if they're close, but I wouldn't recommend using that against melee. So like I said, that's what we do with the bow perks and the bow abilities. Going into the gear, I run light gear. I've run light gear. I've tested light gear. I've tested medium gear. I've tested heavy gear. For my purpose, light gear is so much better. You are so fast with the light roll guys you can put so much distance down with the light roll and with the weapon swap so that way you never lose momentum look at how look at how fast my guys with the bow out we are cooking and that is because we get 10 percent movement speed every time you roll from the bow passive right i don't know if i showed this to you a second ago but right here after you dodge you get 10 percent haste you basically have a 10 percent movement buff all the time after you dodge it's incredible on top of that with light gear, right? You cover so much distance. We are so fast just with the bow out, not even using the rapier. We can move around like crazy. I love light gear. I love light gear. I love light gear. Obviously, light gear is going to suffer in a range versus range fight, right? Like I said before, I'm not someone who wants to completely respect my build, put different gear pieces on every time I duel someone. I want something that works in every situation. Light gear works in every situation better than medium gear does. Light gear is going to help you out in melee fights way more. You're going to have, be able to cover so much distance. Stay away from those melee players. Uh, it helps you out in 1v2s, 1v3s, right? If the players can't catch you because you're so fast, you're going to be able to put more shots down. You're able to live longer. Like I said, guys, follow the Instagram. We have a lot of clips of us outmaneuvering so many kids on us, just constantly running, dipping, dodging, hitting shots left and right because you're so evasive with the light rolls. Medium gear is slightly better in a range versus range fight. But like gear still performs very well in range fights, right? You can still maneuver around like crazy and you can definitely still win those. So like I said, this is a cookie cutter build that I like to run in every situation. Now, getting into my gear, my actual gear pieces, I have tried so many different gear pieces, guys. Training post gear, light gear, heavy gear, medium gear. I like the light gear and I've worked my way back around simply to the 520 PvP faction gear because, 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 because gear score does not matter, guys. I'm gonna say this, gear score does not matter in PvP as much as people think it does. Sure, a higher gear score piece will give you more attribute points, but your perks are more important than anything, guys, I'm telling you. I've tried so many different pieces of gear, so many high gear score pieces with bad perks, good perks. The PvP gear is very, very, very good if you strictly want to do PvP. I highly recommend it. It's easy to get. There's not a lot of grinding. You buy it from your faction post guy, and it is so good because of these two perks. You can stack. These perks stack times five because I have it on every single piece of gear, right? Boom, 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 boom. Reduce max cooldowns by 2.5%. That's stack times five. Every ability is coming off cooldown quicker. That's cool. But what's even better about this build is the resilient, guys. Resilience is huge in PvP, man. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. You have this 4.5% less critical damage taken. Critical hits happen a lot in PvP, and they chunk you, especially as light gear. Having essentially 4.5% times 5, the math on that is a little bit over 20%. You're taking, you're taking, it's around 25%. You're taking a quarter less damage from crits. If you're getting hit 5,000 without PvP gear for critical hits, you're now going to get hit for only 3,100 from critical hits from PvP. That is drastic. That is almost, that is an insane amount of less damage you're taking in range fights and melee fights. Obviously versus melee, this doesn't matter much because we can kite melee pretty well. We can keep our distance. But in those rangers range fights, when you're getting hit in the head, you're getting crit by other bow players, by musket players, by mages. 
this helps you significantly guys i'm telling you i'm telling you i'm telling you perks matter more than gear score does this is a great i love the pp gear and i'm gonna run it until something better that i can find comes out but for now it's the pp gear i like the onyx gems like i said guys the onyx gems if you think about new world right a lot of the player base is physical damage only the mages are doing elemental damage right and some of the life staff life staff doesn't hit hard anyways this just makes sense to run two percent physical damage absorption because it's more damage absorption versus more of the players you'll be fighting right you're going to take less damage from other bow players other musket players sword shield players right anything physical you are going to get hit pretty hard from the mages but that's fine i feel like you get hit pretty hard from the mages no matter what you could beat mages in duels just make sure you're hitting your shots because you do a lot of damage to mages the same way they do a lot of damage to you obviously you want the tier five arrows if you can afford them if you can't the tier four arrows are almost just as good they're really cheap in the trading post if you want to buy them or if you want to craft them obviously you want the tier five ones just do more damage it's simple guys it's simple rolling into the uh amulet the best perk on the amulet for pvp is you have percent more maximum health the health perk insane you want more health right i am running 100 con only and i am 9200 health thanks to that amulet that's insane uh the ring jewelry you have two options here right now i currently have you deal more percent thrust damage i think i haven't found one yet but i think the one that gives you just more critical hit chance i think it's called keen that is better on the ring i don't know if you can get thrust and keen but if you can that's huge i would say prioritize getting the critical chance the 10 percent critical chance and then getting thrust damage <laughs> uh next one earring nine percent stamina regen you're constantly rolling you're constantly moving having that extra stamina regen is huge i haven't seen a better perk on the earring i love this one uh going into the bow there are three incredible perks on the bow guys that you ideally want right in a perfect world you want all three of these perks on the bow you want keen which does 10 percent more critical chance you want vicious which is 10 percent critical damage and you want i forget the name it's escaping me right now but it's a bleed perk every time you crit you do percent it's a bleed dot you do a percent of your weapon damage every second for 10 seconds on crits that's massive you want all three in a deer world obviously you're not going to get that ever rng is crazy in this game you'll probably never see a bow with all three if you do buy it immediately no matter what the price is i want to prioritize heavily 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 the bleed i would say bleed is the most important perk so if you see a high gear score with a bleed perk i would get it that's me personally i like the idea the bleed does a good bit of damage it does a good bit of damage over 10 seconds and you could stack that bleed with your poison shots so now they're ticking twice as hard to two different debuffs absolutely insane guys and you're critting a lot with the bow thanks to again your 300 dex attribute you get a guaranteed critical hit after a dodge make sure you keep me track of this guys you can crit a lot of times with the bow that is absolutely insane uh the gem right now i'm running is the onyx gem this is not the best gem to run for the bow i think it's fun though for our post rush to hit kids harder who are full health the best gem for the bow is going to be the opal gem opal that gives you 15 percent more damage when your stamina is not full and obviously our stamina is never full right we're always rolling we're always moving around and that gem lines up really nicely with one of your bow abilities deal 20 percent more damage for five seconds after dodging so now you're getting that 20 stacked with the 15 from your opal jump every time you dodge you're getting 35 percent more damage that's crazy man you definitely want that opal jump i'll swap this out in a little bit but i'm just having fun in that plus rush right now uh the rapier we don't swing the rapier we want a high gear score rapier with a lot of decks just for more attribute points and then also the best perk i don't have it the best perk that you want on the rapier for this build is sundering repost sundering repost is huge this essentially whenever you land a counter the person takes a percent less damage absorption so you land a counter and for the next 10 seconds they're going to take more damage that is really really nice because if you guys watch some of my clips on twitch or instagram or some of these youtube videos coming out you'll see how often we hit a counter on somebody close by we'll roll away from the damage buff line up a nice headshot with the bow and hit them in the head while they're stunned for all that juicy 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 damage man so with sunny repose they're gonna take even more damage because they have that debuff on them if you can find a rapier with sunny repose get it make sure it's high gear score has good decks the gem doesn't matter because i'm never swinging the rapier so whatever gem you want to put it in if you guys want to do a slightly different tweak of this build do that but for what i do in this bow only high movement build it doesn't matter because i'm never using the rapier for damage uh we covered everything my attribute points i like to do right now i'm doing a 300 dex 100 con you get the 10 percent more health ideally if you have the attribute points right you're finding high gear score gear with the resilient perk on it and you have a lot of attribute points like the void gear right if you have void bent gear 
you have that resilient perk on each piece and you have enough attribute points to actually run 300 decks and 150 con. That is your ideal setup. You want to try your best to get the 300 decks, 150 con because you take 10% reduced critical damage taken once you get to this perk. Reduced critical damage taken in PvP is huge, guys. It's it's huge, it's huge, it's huge. That's why I cannot stress enough, guys. If you don't have Void Bent or you don't have pieces with Resilient on, just get the PvP 520. Gear score doesn't matter as much as people think it does. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I do a lot of duels, a lot of PvP. Gear score does not matter that much. Your perks matter way more. Gear score on weapons does matter because you're going to do an insane amount more damage because your weapon damage is based off your gear score. So you want a high gear score weapon, but you still want those good perks. Right now, I'm running a 550 gear score bow with only the 10% critical damage. I can't seem to find a better one in the training post. And I'm not much of a crafter or gatherer in this game, guys. I do a lot of PvP. I don't really do anything else. So I'm a, I'm a training post gear kind of buy. I, I buy everything for the training post. Um... This is, this is the build I'm running, guys. We're going to do a lot more. This was a one edit. Sorry if it came out a little rough, but I'm trying to save time on my editing. I'm a pretty busy guy. I got a family. I got a full-time job. But I am going to be posting YouTube videos daily, if not daily, every other day. I have so many cool ideas. I'm getting into editing some of the videos now. We're doing 1v1 dual breakdowns. Keep an eye out on the channel for those breakdowns of the 1v1. Some 1v2 breakdowns, 1v3 breakdowns, war PvP breakdowns of how I'm playing and my play style. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you like this build guide. Like I said, guys, please follow us, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok. I'll link it down below in the description. On top of that, watch out for these new videos coming out, man. It's going to be sick. I don't really see anybody else on YouTube doing these 1v1 dual breakdowns from a bow-only perspective. Keep an eye out. Thanks, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.